Hey everyone, welcome to today's multi-cloud data security workshop. I'm looking forward to talking about data security and how we can enforce it using various cloud services. The material in this workshop is a part of my course and Eric Johnson's course, SEC 510 Public Cloud Security, AWS, Azure, and GCP. And if you're interested in learning more about SEC 510, you can always reach the landing page for it at sans.org slash SEC 510. And feel free to enroll in our completely free demo by clicking the course demo button on that page. So here's the agenda for today. We're going to talk about cloud data security goals, the things that we're trying to accomplish when we want to ensure data security in the cloud. Then we're going to talk about two of those subjects, unauthorized file sharing, as well as cloud data detection and loss prevention. Then we're going to actually have the workshop where we're going to play around with both of those components. We'll have a debrief and I'll leave you with some additional resources and we'll have some Q&A. So let's first talk about what we're trying to accomplish when it comes to data security. So Frank Kim, our curriculum lead in the cloud security curriculum, as well as for the leadership curriculum, put this diagram here together for leadership 512. Uh, that course is a leadership course, but it relates to our course as well, because we actually have to implement data security. And he calls this the data security hierarchy of needs. And the idea is the foundational levels here are necessary in order to accomplish the goals higher up in the hierarchy. So before you can do anything, you need to have policy and inventory, because if you don't have inventory of your data, how can you possibly secure it? Then we can implement encryption, masking of our data, and, and proper storage of our data. Then we need to ensure that we have proper access controls so that only the appropriate people have access to the data and that that data is only shared appropriately. And then finally, for high maturity organizations, we can detect and prevent data loss that is happening from our cloud accounts. Now, I put together this set of icons next to the diagram that shows how these goals map to various cloud services in AWS, Azure, and GCP. So starting from the top, we have CloudTrail, Azure Monitor, and Google Cloud Logging. These are the general purpose services that we use in order to look at cloud activity, API logs for the cloud. Then we also have Macy, AWS Macy, Azure Information Protection, and Google Cloud Data Loss Prevention, which allows us to specifically find sensitive data and potentially find when that data is being sent outside of our account. Then from the data access level, we have AWS Identity and Access Management, Azure Active Directory Role-Based Access Control, and Google Cloud IAM. On the data protection side, we have these various services for data encryption, AWS KMS, the Azure Key Vault, and Google Cloud KMS, while we have a variety of different services in order to store our data appropriately. AWS Amazon S3, Azure Storage, Google Cloud Storage, but also databases like Amazon RDS, Azure's database for MySQL or PostgreSQL or MariaDB, and Google Cloud SQL, along with a many, many other services that store our sensitive data in the cloud. And then finally, while data governance is really more of a management and leadership function, we can use cloud services to automate and enforce these policies using things like AWS Config, Azure Policy, and Google Cloud Org Policy. Now, I will mention, though, that it would be a high level maturity organization if you're actually enforcing these different items here. So I would say in terms of maturity, you'd be implementing these services first, then these, then these, and then maybe finally these to really just lock in your policy as code or as configuration. Here are the different topics that we're going to cover in SEC 510. So basically everything except for the uh, governance portion. And well, we, are, we do cover enforcement, but we don't cover the actual creation of policy or anything like that. And in this workshop, we're gonna focus on these items here, uh, proper sharing of data, 
preventing uh, doing detection and data loss prevention, as well as masking or de-identifying data using tokenization or masking. So let's start off by talking about unauthorized file sharing in the cloud. So everybody knows about public S3 buckets. Everybody's heard about how people put files in the cloud and give it to everyone. And then there's been so many breaches associated with public cloud buckets. But it's actually a lot more than just these core services, S3, Azure, and Google Cloud. And it's also a lot more than identity and access management as it relates to these services. In particular, AWS has so many different exfiltration paths, some of which are shown in this tool called AWS Prowler, an automated auditing tool that will find a variety of different configuration flaws in your cloud account. And you could see that Prowler is able to find EBS snapshots, so disk snapshots that are set to public, public container repositories, queues, notification systems, Redshift, Lambda functions, and a whole lot more. So AWS has a lot of different exfiltration paths, even though our focus for this short workshop has to be on S3. I want to make sure that you're aware of the fact that there are many other exfiltration paths. Now, in Google Cloud, we have something in between AWS and Azure, where Google Cloud has a couple of things that you can share, but not that many outside of storage. One example here is that we can store, uh, share disk snapshots and images via Google Cloud uh, to the public using the all users principle as well as the all authenticated users principle. And this is something really funny that we cover in SEC 510, which is that in Google Cloud, if you authorize all authenticated users to access your data, that doesn't mean all people that are authenticated to your identity provider. It means anybody who is logged into a Google account. So this is a very bad setting that people use all the time. And Google also supports being able to share BigQuery data sets, for example. Now in Azure, sorry, Google is uh, going off on my phone because I said its name. <laughs> now, Azure has the least amount of exfiltration paths. That's not to say that Azure doesn't have many things that can be exfiltrated. It's that, that those things can only be exfiltrated via Azure storage. So Azure Storage is the centralized service that we can use to share disk snapshots as well as database images and really anything else in Azure because it's such a foundational service there. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't have a serious problem as it relates to Azure Storage. In fact, we have a very serious concern that we need to be aware of called SAS tokens or shared access signatures. And these are signatures that a authorized user in Azure can create. And using those signatures, they can publish a file to the public internet, even if you are not authorized to access the file otherwise. In fact, if you block all public access to an Azure storage container, you could still access the files within that storage container if you have a valid shared access signature. Now, all three providers have this capability. It's not just Azure, but in Azure, I would argue that it's the most important because Azure storage is the main exfiltration path in Azure, as well as in Azure in particular, it's very easy not only to create shared access signatures to allow people to read data but you can also create shared access signatures, allowing people to add data to a storage container as well. Now let's talk about another topic. I would argue the main topic we're gonna to cover in our workshop, which is cloud sensitive data detection and loss prevention. Now the first cloud service that may come to mind when I mention that topic is Amazon Macy. Now Amazon is the biggest cloud provider of the big three. There's no surprise there. and Amazon Macy is the service that people associate most often with cloud data loss prevention. But I was surprised to learn that Amazon Macy is actually really not much of a data loss prevention tool at all. 
It's really a sensitive data detection service, and it only exists for S3. You cannot use Amazon Macy to find sensitive data in the other data sources that we mentioned earlier. Currently, Macy only supports S3, and it doesn't prevent any kind of data loss. It simply shows you where your sensitive data is. And while that might be a sensitive or a, a particularly useful capability, that does not mean that it is going to necessarily uh, be considered a data loss prevention solution. So whenever you see Amazon Macy and people say it's a DLP, not really. It does two things. It detects data for S3, and it provides a dashboard showing potential problems in your security configuration. So underneath that section I just showed you, in the user interface, we have some details about public access, encryption, and sharing of data. Now, Azure has another service that's similar to Amazon Macy. And unfortunately, I'll, I'll show that to you in just one moment. Actually, I'll, I already introduced it, so I'll mention it now. Unfortunately, the pricing mechanism for Azure was a little bit too complicated to set up for this workshop. We want to make this workshop as cheap, if not free, as possible. You need to provide a credit card in order to sign up for these various cloud accounts. But we wanted to make this trivially pricey, either $0 or $2 maximum. And when going through all of the pricing details for turning on Azure information protection, I realized, hey, this wasn't going to make a whole lot of sense for a two-hour workshop. And in fact, when I try to log into Azure Information Protection every single time, I would get this error saying fail to access Active Directory, even though I clearly had access to Active Directory. So on the Azure side, we're not going to play around with one of these data protection solutions. We're going to play around more so with those SaaS tokens that I mentioned earlier. But we will also play around with Google Cloud Data Loss Prevention. And out of the two of them, I would say that Google Data Loss Prevention is the one that is more robust than Amazon Macy. Because yes, it has the capability that Amazon Macy has of discovering sensitive data, but we can also use it for de-identification, meaning tokenization or masking of data, either where it's being stored or as we are pulling it out of our queries. And in fact, I think it's really cool that Google Cloud DLP has an API that you can use to send data and then have that DLP API categorize that data as sensitive or not sensitive. And you could do that in your application layer as well. Now, this isn't to say that Amazon is less feature rich than Google Cloud by no means. It just may mean that Amazon has these same capabilities in different components of AWS. And in fact, with regards to de-identification, I know that they implemented that for AWS CloudWatch logs late last year. So that does in fact exist in AWS, just not in Macy. So now we're gonna have a workshop playing around with those two concepts, two small concepts in cloud data security. Because again, we only have two hours, we can't cover every aspect of the pyramid. We're gonna focus our energy on sharing of files and sensitive data detection. So in order to do this workshop, I have good news for those folks who read the original description. We originally thought that it would be necessary for you to set up a virtual machine in order to perform this workshop. And we decided pretty much last minute that, hey, maybe that wasn't necessary. And we made it so that the workshop could be done without a virtual machine. So all you will need access to to do this workshop is a modern web browser and a credit card that you can use to sign up for these different cloud accounts. So we have to sign up for an AWS account, an Azure account, and a Google cloud account to perform all of the activities in the workshop. You don't have to perform all the activities in the workshop. You can just do AWS or just do Azure or just do Google. But if you want to get the full value of the workshop, you will need three of those accounts. And we provide information on how you can set those up as well. Now, there, there are some limitations to new accounts. They are relevant to this particular workshop. So that's that should not be a problem. But let us know if there is a problem with your new account. And as mentioned, there will be possibly a few dollars that are going to be charged to that credit card, even though we're using free services here. Because AWS, just when they say free tier, uh, it's a very complicated pricing solution. 
Uh, and then once we do this, we're going to actually be playing around with the cloud consoles. I'm not a huge fan of playing around with the cloud UIs. I'm a programmer by trade, and I love working with the command line interface and with Terraform. But in this particular lab, for simplicity, we are going to be using the cloud consoles, just the web interface. And we are going to perform sensitive data detection in AWS and Google Cloud, as well as perform unauthorized file sharing in Azure. So is everybody excited? Everybody ready to go? All right, well, we're going to send a link in the chat, which you are gonna to use to navigate to the workbook for this webcast, for this workshop. And from there, you'll be able to get started. So if I could have that link posted to the Slack channel, and if you have any issues accessing the Slack channel, please let me know as well. We can help you out with that as well. But we just posted that in the Slack channel and you're ready to go. So let me know if you have any questions. This workshop is going to last for the next, let's say, hour and a half. And we're going to do a debrief at approximately an hour and a half afterwards. And uh, Randall, I believe there are a couple people with issues accessing the Slack. Uh, let's uh, see what we can do to help those folks out. And uh, I hope you will enjoy the workshop. Let me know if you have any questions. Quick additional thing to mention, uh, we just shared the workbook link in the webinar chat for Zoom as well. So if you're having issues accessing Slack and you just want to access the workbook link, that'll be shown in the webinar chat as well. All right, folks, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the workshop. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we uh, discussed. Um, really quickly, is my camera working? There it is. Okay. For some reason, wasn't showing up. Okay. So let's talk about the workshop. First of all, I put together this comparison table here to really compare and contrast the data detection and loss prevention items that exist in AWS and GCP. Because as mentioned in the intro, AWS Macy, although it's the first service that comes to mind when I think about data loss prevention in AWS, it ended up doing a lot less than I expected it to as I learned more about it. Firstly, it's data sources. It only has one data source, S3, at this current juncture. I'll guess that in the future they will introduce other data sources. My best guess is that they're going to introduce DynamoDB next, because I think that would be a logical next step, because DynamoDB is a managed database as opposed to one that you manage yourself with uh, infrastructure like Amazon RDS, while GCP supports many different data sources, including those that are native to it, storage, BigQuery, cloud data store. And you can also analyze external data using their APIs. So there's really no limit to what GCP can analyze if you're willing to put the work in there. AWS and GCP both support custom identifiers. So that's good so that we can find things like the ICD-10 numbers that we saw in this workshop. But one thing that someone mentioned in the help channel is that when they ran the ICD-10 regex for the data that we uploaded, it actually did not find any of the ICD-10 codes that were within that spreadsheet, which was very surprising because in GCP it did. Now, I understand that there's going to be some false positives because 
that regex is pretty general and it might match certain things like usernames and passwords or emails in this case. But I was surprised that it had a lot of false negatives as well in the case of AWS. So that's really interesting to me, especially because in the exercise, we took a component or a segment of that spreadsheet and copied and pasted it into this test modal. And the test picks up all of the different items while the actual scan failed to pick up any of those items. So that was very interesting to me. In AWS, we have some configuration auditing. So that's one thing that Macy provides in their dashboard that GCP does not. GCP may have those capabilities, but not in that service. And conversely, AWS might have DLP capabilities, but they're not a part of Macy, whereas GCP's DLP, in addition to having data detection, has tokenizing capabilities as well as API integration. On the subject of data exfiltration, AWS has a lot of exfiltration paths. And when I say that, I mean that there are multiple different services that you can configure to send data out of your cloud account without giving people IAM permissions. GCP has a few of those as well, whereas Azure has the least of them because the majority of things that you can share in Azure are shared through Azure Storage. So it's not like Azure is less of a problem, but it is the case that we can focus most of our energy on Azure storage and we'll be able to handle a lot of these exfiltration concerns. With that, I'm gonna give you a couple additional resources you might be interested in taking a look at after this workshop concludes. Here are some of the resources on sans.org slash cloud that are relevant to this particular workshop. First of all, shameless plug, the Cloud Ace podcast. If you haven't checked it out, it is a free podcast that contains 12 episodes where I got to interview 15 different cloud security experts and talk about a whole host of matters. So I hope that you'll check that out. We also have a survey that came out late last year on multi-cloud usage because we determined that a workshop like this would be very valuable considering that so many organizations use multiple cloud providers, not just AWS, Azure, and GCP, but even some Oracle, Alibaba, and IBM. There's also an ebook that talks about similar topics to what we cover in Sec 510, a poster that we've published that contains a lot of those comparison tables, like the one I showed you a couple slides ago. We have a command line cheat sheet if you'd like to learn how to interface with the command line, the clouds via the command line instead of the user interface. We have another blog on the subject of multi-cloud security. We have a white paper on Firebase, which is another topic related to Google that I can talk about all day. And then we have a final paper regarding uh, dealing with um, dealing with traffic that's being exfiltrated via Azure and how to lock that down. So I wanna give a couple of special thanks first to Boone Lowe for being an awesome TA. I also wanna give a thanks to uh, Randall Jones for being our facilitator for this workshop. I know that you subbed in fairly last moment and I appreciate that. I wanna thank Stephen Bernard for helping test out this workshop, really appreciate that. And I want to thank Frank Kim, the lead author of Management 512, or now Leadership 512, who put together that nice data hierarchy of needs pyramid. And this course, uh, the course that I mentioned before, SEC 510, is the course that I wrote alongside Eric Johnson. And you're going to be seeing a lot of great content, like the content we talked about in this workshop, if you decide to take a course like SEC 510, which is a course that helps you translate concepts between multiple cloud providers because multiple clouds require multiple solutions. A solution in one cloud provider that works great will work miserably in another cloud provider. And I also wanted to mention that if you're really interested in learning more about monitoring and threat detection, SEC 541 I know also has some content on Amazon Macy. And here are some of the different skill sets you might want to have when you're looking at 
uh, taking a SANS course, you may want to take a course based on what you're trying to accomplish. So SEC 510 is good for someone who wants to be an engineer that wants to learn about multi-cloud automation architecture. Whereas if you focus most of your energy on detection, 541 or 588 or 509 might be more appropriate for you. And just finally, to end my sales pitch, here are some reviews that you may want to take a look at from SEC 510. Uh, we've had a lot of great runs of the course, both live and in person, live online, in person, and on demand. And I hope that I'll have you in a class one day. But regardless, I really hope that you'll go to sans.org slash SEC 510 and click the course demo button on that page because we give out a free hour of the course. And I find that very few people know about that. And this is true for every SANS course. So if I were you, I would check out all the SANS courses that I'm even remotely interested in and click that course demo button and just listen to an hour of content over lunch and see if it's interesting to you enough to enroll. And with that, I have a few minutes uh, basically only two minutes, but I could stay over a little bit if uh, need be because I kind of spoke a little bit longer than I expected uh, for any last minute questions that folks might have. Val asks in the chat, what is a group index used for in Google Cloud? Can you specify uh, more specifically what you're referring to? Is there a group index field within the DLP service that we played around with? I may have missed that. Thanks, uh, Sheikh, for joining. Pre appreciate that. There is something in the workbook regarding group index. Let me look at that really quickly. I might be misremembering. I'm not sure I'm seeing what you're referring to in the workbook. If you're talking about info types, that is the object that we create in order to find specific types of data. Maybe it was one in one of the screenshots, very possible. Any other questions while I look up those screenshots? Thanks for joining, Paul. Appreciate that. All right, folks, with that, I'm going to say goodbye to y'all for today, and I appreciate you uh, joining for this workshop. Uh, if you'd like to reach out to me, feel free to uh, do so on LinkedIn uh, or Twitter. I don't really use Twitter that much, so I prefer if you follow me on LinkedIn as uh, Brandon Evans Sands will pop up. There's a lot of Brandon Evanses out there. And uh, Val, I'll answer your question um, offline if you'd like to on LinkedIn, just follow up with me and I'll follow up with that. And I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll hopefully see you at a future Sands event or a future Sands workshop. Take care folks.